All right, so my basic strategy when I'm trying to prove some given conclusion is to ask myself, first of all, can I find this conclusion buried in the premises somewhere? And as I look at these premises, no, I can't. I don't see if L then S buried in there anywhere, which means I'm going to have to derive it some different way. The only rule that I know which will give me as a conclusion if L then S is a hypothetical syllogism. So I think that's what I'm going to have to use. So at some point, remember my arrow means the same thing as horseshoe. Um, so I'm going to use a hypothetical syllogism to get to this conclusion. Now, what premises am I going to need to, to get to that conclusion using the hypothetical syllogism rule? Well, I'm going to need something like this. If L, then R. If R, then S. Now, and that'll give me, therefore, uh, if L, then S. I've already got, actually, it's given to me in a premise, if L, I'm sorry, if R, then S. So all I need to prove here is if L, then R, and I'll get my conclusion that I need. So I know that I'm going to use number two is going to be one of my premises. So now my question is, well, how do I get if L, then R? Again, I look and see, is that buried somewhere in my premises and I can jailbreak it out? No, I don't see that. <clears throat> so... However, what I do see is um, buried in here is if L, then not Q. All right. So I'm going to get what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to get to if L, then R by using another hypothetical syllogism. Now, if I use this premise, if I assume that I can jailbreak out if L, then not Q, then what other premise am I going to need to make a valid hypothetical syllogism that will get me to if L, then R? Well, I'm going to need if not Q, then R. And it's going to follow from those two by hypothetical syllogism that if L, then R. All right, so now what, what tasks do I have? Well, I I've got to figure out how to get... Uh, not Q and R. Uh, if not Q, then R. And I've got to figure out how to get if L, then not Q, jailbroken out of there. Let me start with this one. Okay. Um, how do I get not Q, if not Q, then R? Well, as I look here, actually, uh, I think I see it in here. Oh, it is in here. Look at this. If I can prove that um, it's not the case that Q and R, then I can use modus ponens to get, if not Q, then R. So, what I want to do, I'm going to assume that I'm going to get at this through modus ponens. And one of my premises will be premise three. The other will be whatever that turns out to be. Now my question is, how do I get not Q then R? Hey, good news. That's a piece of cake. It's already in here. All I got to do is apply uh, my simplification rule to premise 5, and I've got that. Boom. So now I'm good to go. I've got, I got, I connected my given premises to what I need to get. Uh, simplification. Now I need, how do I get to if L then not Q? All right. Well, obviously I could get there through modus ponens. So if I can prove that all this is true, then I can prove by modus ponens on premise uh, three and whatever this is going to end up being, um, I can prove the if L then not Q. Okay, so how do I get not P and uh, not Q, not R? Well, hey, um, actually, I've already got part of this, right? I've already got the not Q and not R. I proved that down here. Remember, um, or actually, I got that rather from 
from, I already did that jailbreak. So I can go ahead and put it up here to make it clearer for you. I've already got that. So now all I need to get this, I need to get not P. And then I can use conjunction to, to get this premise right here. So now my task is all I need is not P. And then I'm in business. How do I get not P? Well, I see a not P in here in this disjunction. That might be the way that I could get at it. So I could apply, if I could prove that this is not true, then I could use a disjunction rule to prove that not P is true. I think that that's the, the easiest way to do it. Well, that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to prove that it's not the case that Q and R Now, how am I going to prove that it's not the case that Q and R? Oh, actually, good news. I already did prove it's the case that not Q and R just by applying simplification to premise 5. So hold on. I've already done the work here. Check this out. Now I'm in business. Okay. I applied simplification to, not Q, to premise 5, and I got this. Then I apply disjunction to premise, I'm sorry, yeah, then I apply disjunction using premises 1 and, and this one, which is going to be 6, call this 6, 1, 6, and not P follows from disjunction, that's my line 7. Now... In line 8, if I just do a conjunction of 7 and 6, 6 and 7, then I get all this, 9. Now if I just apply modus ponens to 3 and 8, then I get this, and uh, modus ponens to, sorry, I made a mistake here. So this is not Q, if not Q, then R, I get by an application of modus ponens to line four. So I have line four and line six. If I apply modus ponens there, I get not Q, then, if not Q, then R. All right, now if I apply hypothetical syllogism to nine and 10, I get if L then R, and if I apply hypothetical syllogism again to 2 and 11, I get if L then S.